Hi, in this video I'm going to give you an overview of some of the technologies behind the web development stack called ASP.NET. ASP.NET is part of the Microsoft stack of the .NET framework. So let's talk about some of the details about .NET and how the technology behind it works. So first of all, what is .NET? It's a, it's a unified platform for working on all kinds of applications. And so you can see from traditional desktop applications all the way through the web, mobile, and the cloud, and working with AI as well. Visual Studio is the common tool that most people think of when they talk about .NET development. Here at Grand Canyon University, when we talk about .NET, we focus on two technologies primarily. First of all, we call Windows Forms apps our Windows apps. And we have two classes that we teach here called CST 117 and 227. So 117 is like the Introduction to C Sharp class. And 227 is sometimes called C Sharp 2. And both of those use Windows Forms or Win Forms. And so they create standard Windows applications. Now the next level of development in .NET is ASP.NET. And that's what the course that I'm currently teaching is, is called 247. And so we create web applications using a web server, a database, and we work with the c -sharp programming language. But you can do much more with .NET, as you can see. We can work with cloud technologies. You can work with mobile apps. And so with the tool called Xamarin, it is possible to create both Android and Apple iOS applications with one language, with c -sharp. And so the applications are a little bit bigger than average. They, they compile to be larger sized. But you have one source code for your application, and it, it will run on both application platforms. Next in the column, we have Unity. You can create the 3D Unity games that run on Xbox or mobile or on your computer, and that works with C Sharp as well. IoT is the Internet of Things, and of course, AI. Artificial intelligence is a big deal at Microsoft and their library ML.NET stands for machine learning. So .NET encompasses practically every type of software that you can think of developing. This video is supposed to be with the course number CST247, so our focus here is going to be on the ASP.NET framework. If you look at a diagram of all the pieces that go into .NET, you'll see something usually like this. At the bottom of the stack is this thing called the Common Language Runtime. And so if you come from the Java world, you'll think of the Java virtual machine as pr pretty much the identical type of uh, function here. It's at the bottom, that it translates all the languages that are above it. And there are a lot of languages. If you look at the purple line at the top of this chart, you can see that we have Visual Basic, C++, C Sharp, JScript, and I'm told that there are about 20 different languages that you can program in and create a .NET applications. And so almost every time, though, when people think of .NET, they use C Sharp. That's the primary language that .NET developers focus on. Now, a second part of the framework is the library, the class library. And so I included a code snippet here for those of you that are programming. You'll recognize these right away, that whenever you create a new feature of an application, you have to import something. So in this case, there's import text. If you're working with regular expressions, you're going to import that library. I.O. is for disk output and input. Uh, looks like we have database going on. And so anytime that you work with a network or text-to-speech or any feature at all in your application, you're going to import things. Well, where are they imported from? Well, they are imported from the framework class library. And so you can think of the library as all the functions that Windows is capable of doing. So working with text, working with the internet, working with disk, working with databases, working with every feature. It's your library that, that you're focusing in on. And so the .NET Common Library is available to all the languages that are programming a .NET application. Here's kind of a history, a timeline of where .NET came from and where it's going. And so you can see it was born in 2002. This was pretty much a reaction to Java. And some would even say that .NET and C Sharp in particular is a complete ripoff of Java. Java was there first. They invented the idea of compile a language into multiple platforms and run it anywhere. And so C Sharp and .NET 
pretty much were, some would say, an improvement over Java, but it certainly followed in their tracks. And so at the time of this video, we're at the uh, late versions of version 4.8. Where does C-sharp fit in then? As I mentioned before, or you should have caught, .NET is not a language. It is a, it is a collection of frameworks. And so C-sharp is one of the languages that you can work with in .NET. So it's a, it's a .NET compliant language. C-sharp and Visual Basic are probably the first two that come to mind. So, as I mentioned, there's 20 different languages, and here are a few of them that will actually compile into .NET. And so C-sharp is the far more important of all of them. So if we look at the, another diagram, again, of all of the pieces of the framework, we're going to focus here in the green rows. So if you want to develop desktop applications, you're going to think of WinForms, likely. But there's also the others of WPF or Silverlight, I don't know if anyone still works with Silverlight or not anymore, but I think it's dead pretty much. But WinForms would be how would you build a standard Windows application. If you're working in the web app, app world, you're going to be talking about ASP.NET. And uh, WCF is about communications between uh, different uh, applications. And then finally, we're going to find at the bottom that ADO.NET is the database support that would be uh, included in .NET. And so those three things there are pretty common for most standard applications that we're developing. And of course, Visual Studio is the tool that goes across all of them. Let's talk for a moment about what the difference between interpreted languages are and compiled languages, because that is really important to understand how .NET works. So back in the old days, when the language that everyone seemed to use was C, you would have to compile it. And you still compile C or C++ today. And the language would be compiled into bytes, bits, bits is what I should say, and the machine code would then run on the processor that was specifically designed for that hardware. So the other alternative, kind of the other extreme, is an interpreted language. So for instance, this is a Py extension, so Python, and it's written as same kind of language, same syntax that you might find in a compiled language, but the difference is that the when it's executed, the, the line by line interpretation is done at runtime. And so it runs quite a bit slower, and also people would find it frustrating that when you're doing an interpreted language, sometimes you don't find out there's any errors in your code until you actually click the run button. And so compiled languages are more strict usually, and they require you to be very careful with your spellings, and if you omit, omit something, you will know right away in a compiled language. However, in the interpreted languages, um, you can get it running quickly, but you might have more errors in the runtime. Also, you can think of different variations of how languages are interpreted. Sometimes it's not just clear black and white. So an interpreted language at the top of this chart here is the slowest. And then at the very bottom, we have the extreme opposite where we have actual a Java virtual machine embedded into a chip. So I'm using the JVM syntax here because usually that's what people think of when they talk about just-in-time compiled languages. But just like Java works, um, .NET is doing the same idea. So you can almost like interchange these two in the technology. So what happens when you take a language like .NET or a system like .NET and you try to run it? Well, it has to be compiled into machine code eventually. But there are intermediate steps that are done here. And there's a good reason for it. So the compiling is done kind of like in, into an intermediate state of compiling. It's um, compiled into what's called bytecode. It would look like assembly language instructions, but it's kind of universal. So it will run on any machine as long as you have the pre-installed uh, runtime environment. And so from interpretation all the way to embedded into hardware is the scale of the uh, speed that we're looking at on this chart. So let's talk about that interpreted intermediate stage. So the common intermediate language, CIL, is what we're focusing on here. So you can see the top chart here shows that we have three different languages. They're compiled into this common intermediate language. They're not directly com compiled into machine code. So the common intermediate language, or CIL, is somewhat universal. It will, it will compile into uh, the same CIL on a Macintosh or on Windows or on Linux or whatever application platform you're on. However, the end result is going to be machine code that's specific to that computer. So the uh, 
compiling process takes two stages. The uh, First of all, to the intermediate stage, and then finally into machine code. A lot of times, and probably almost all the time, it's compiled as what they call just-in-time. So it's on demand. It is translated fairly quickly into machine code. Let's take a look at some actual code. So at the top of the page here, we have a, uh, this blue box that so shows a statement in C-sharp. So it's, it's like almost like English. Uh, any, any programmer can see that and understand what's going on. However, the intermediate language looks like this. So this looks a lot like what you would expect assembly language to look like. They're instructions. They're telling you how to move data from one place to another, maybe almost like address points. But it's not quite address uh, specific. So down at the bottom, we have an Intel machine language or assembly language um, uh, piece of code here. And so the process goes from human readable, intermediate, and then the gray box at the bottom actually is the assembly language. And so that would be the process of compiling. So that gives you an idea of what .NET is. And so it's a system of collection of uh, programming languages that are compiled into this bytecode, and then you can run it on any platform that has the common runtime library, very much like Java. In the next video, I'd like to talk to you about ASP.NET and how we use it to develop web pages in specific. And so until next time, thanks for watching.